Good morning. Morning. Cheers to Robinson. Thank you, Norm. Very well, thank you. Now, well, today, we're going to take a little trip out to uh, Mutton's Mill. Mutton's Leg of Land. <laughs> no, Mutton's Mill. Mutton's Mill. I've never heard of Mutton's Mill. Have you not? No. Yeah. Well, so that's... Some else you take would be different. Well, I am. Into the fleet. What drains the f drains drains the um, the fields, the water from the the dikes into the fleet, okay. uh, which is like a very small river that actually ends up running into the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to go there this morning. Lovely. Okay, Lovely. and we're going to take what we're going to use today is my faithful, beautiful. Bestest camera of the year. Now, I hear a lot of people going on about this on YouTube lately. I think they're, they're really going for it, aren't they? Because it seems, uh, that seems a big conversation. Is the I thought, I've the also one. noticed, uh, Mr. Robinson, that the prices are dropping on oh, no. that. They have dropped us a, a, a tad, haven't they? They have. But the, the, I don't think, why. the other thing I've noticed is Sony 3, yes. a is it this A three? A seven three. Is holding is holding the prices more than that is. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Well, it's not it's not anything untoward. I can tell you now. No, no. I was I was looking because I want I want to know why I should buy one of them. I I nearly jump ship before the Canon EOS on the Sony to go to the Sony, but because I'm a Canon user, all, all my equipment is Canon. Yeah, but can so, I buy the adapter for them? You can. I didn't really want to go to Sony because I don't like their A uh, EVF. Okay. It is really. It, it's still like the old-fashioned EVFs, and I, I, I put it. You put it to your eye, and you just feel oh, that's awful looking. It's like pixelated and horrible. I don't know what they are like now. They, they must be better now. But <clears throat> before, that's what put me off Sony. Yeah. And it also put me off mirrorless cameras actually. Oh. Yes, it was the EVF because I, I didn't like looking through and thinking, oh god, that looks horrible, you know. But with this EVF, Canon has really cracked it. Mm -hmm. And there are many things that I love about this camera over and above my DSLRs now. Well, for a start, it's the weight. The weight is the biggest. Secondly, thing, look at that. For big hands like me, I'm six foot three and I've got massive hands, and that just sits in my fingers there, beautifully. And I feel confident with that and chucking it around, you know? I really do. I'm it's always there ready to catch it anyhow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, put it, put it in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> what I find. I've always wondered why Canon never done a bloody flip screen. It, it done my head in. You had a lovely well, 5 the DS. Well, cameras, they never did, did they? No. Just, that really done my head in. And anyway, this came along, and I thought, do you know what, I've got enough megapixels there, 31 megapixels. I thought that, that's that's good because you're getting a lot of detail. You know, with us landscapers, we love detail. Absolutely. But this baby, beautiful in every way. And uh, you know, I don't mind the one card slot. They're all going on about that one card slot, weren't they? Yeah. I think that's a lot of videographers with a two card yeah. slot thing. Isn't it? Well, I don't know. No, I think it's, it's professional, professional compared to somebody. Like myself, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm not professional. I'm semi. Oh, you could call class me a semi pro. Make money casually with it, as in workshops and whatever. But I don't do it full time. No. Because I enjoy it so much, and I, I'm, I'm, I worry that it will kill the passion for me. The thing is, I'm still passionate about it, and I love it. So, you know, maybe that's that's why I do part time as opposed to full time. What, what do class full time and part time? Then? What do you mean? If you were a full-time photographer. I thought you were talking about me personally. <laughs> full-time for me is from 9 till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and when I'm doing photography, it's um, 7 o'clock in the morning to 
when I fall asleep during yeah. the day. Well, at the minute, it's too bad, is it? Because it's... Well, at the moment, we've had this fantastic right. 8 o'clock sunrise. Perfect. And 4 o'clock sunset. Um, you could you could be shooting all day mm. at the moment, couldn't you? You could do, couldn't you? Yeah, easily. If you're if you're really really passionate about it and you want to be out all day. So where is Mutton's Mill? Right, Mutton's Mill. Let's get back to that. Yeah. Good point. Mutton's Mill is drainage mill. Um, last worked in 1947 by. So it's not a working mill then. It was a working mill. Yeah, but, but not, not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, it was a working mill by, and it, it was owned by a chap called Mr. Fred Mutton, hence the name Mutton's Mutton. Mill. Here we go. So in 1984, it had a new cap put on and new, two new sales. Okay. And it is privately owned and uh, it's on Halvergate Marshes. Oh. So that'd be a lovely one to photograph. So, uh, we we'll to go through that magic door again, mate. Um, yeah. So, should we go? Yeah. Let's do it. And here we are, Richard. Here we are, Ian. Lovely old job. Where are we? We are... <laughs> <laughs> we are at Helvergate Marshes, young man. Huh? We're going to get up there and uh, get a nice composition. Get the uh, Osar doing his thing and uh, I'll explain what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and how I'm getting the shots. You've got to get up in the morning haven't you? Yeah, on your camera. Yeah. <laughs> what you got there? Nice EOSR? Oh, yeah. oh lovely old job. Goldfish lens. Uh, Goldfish lens? Yeah. It looks like a tilt shift lens to me. Is what it is? Yeah. <laughs> we'll go through the modes this morning shall we? Okay. And uh, I'll teach you what the modes are. Hey. Alright buddy? Yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely old job. So composition is here. So we've got a nice reflection in, in the pool. And what we're going to do is get that reflection. And with any luck, 17 mil will do the job here. It's very tight for the composition. I, I have a tilt shift lens on, which helps me a lot. So there's a little lesson for you today is about tilt shift lenses and what they're capable of doing. As you can see, I can't get everything in there, okay? Unless I do what tilt shift lens does and I, it does this. So you go one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots, five shots. So I can do all of that. There's the shot, okay, that's the shot. There you go. But I cannot physically get that in. As you can see, I can get bottom half or I can, and I cut the top half or I can cut the bottom half and get the top half. If I had a normal 17 mil lens on, that's what I'll get or that. So it's not in the frame very well. So what I do is with the tilt shift lens, I'll keep it straight. So the whole camera is straight that way and level and horizontal. And then what I'll do, you can see these lines here. So I can bring that down and up. So I can shift my lens up and down. That's one shot. So I'll take the shot, bring it down, take the shot, bring it down, take the shot, bring it down to there, take the shot, bring it down to that line and take the shot. And then I'd stitch them in Lightroom. And basically what you're getting is a, is a uh, portrait panoramic. So as you can see, I can't get that shot in. But if I do this, like I said before, go right down, I can get that in. So what I'll do, I'll take the shot. We've got one half seconds, F11, ISO 100. We're on the bottom half of the shift of the lens. We are now going to bring it up to a quarter and take the shot. And I'm going to bring it up again. Take the shot. Take the 
yo and then bring it up take a shot again and then bring it up take a shot again bring it up take a shot again bring it up one more take a shot again just decided to yeah there you go there you go right okay so that now is a full panoramic so. so I've got a small spike there which is the highlight on now I haven't got it I'll just bring it down one more so that is a perfect um, perfect uh, exposure for that for that image. Take the shot. Now I'm going to bring it down to the next part of the shot. Just check my exposure. That seems to be highlighted up. So no, no, that's, that's, that's good. So probably bring it down that one. Take the shot. So what I'm going to do is just control the exposure every shot now exposure looks okay that's fine take the shot okay bring it down another shift and now we can see it's getting darker so we want to change the exposure slightly take the shot now the thing is you've got to be quite quick with this otherwise because it's in the morning things are changing all the time rapidly so again exposure has gone down so we want to come up on the exposure until we get that right take a shot okay and then bring it down the last one look at the exposure see it's gone it's gone a whole stop down take the shot okay so that is the full shot. Now I've got some colour over there. Just a tad. Not enough. Not enough. Never mind. You can never tell when you get up in the morning, can you, Richard? Hey. How are you getting on over there, bud? Oh, are you really? Yeah. Lovely old job. Okay. Even with a 16mm lens, you will struggle here. So you need a very, very wide angled lens. Now we've got a lot of uh, geese and that flying around, haven't we? And there is some little bit of colour up there that I really want to grab. So we're going to carry on and see what we get out of this uh, beautiful scene that we've got in front of us. Right, um, what we're going to do now is, Richard, is yeah. show you some uh, different modes on your camera. You've got, you got the Canon 5D Mark II there, haven't you? Yeah, I have. For a beginner, yeah. for a beginner photographer, yeah. like myself, yeah. to go from a crop sensor to a full sensor, I would really, for value for money, that is a, is, is a great camera. I love it. Yeah. It's not complicated. I completely agree with you. They are good cameras. I mean, we now bought... The, the Mark III, and yeah. I said there's a bit more to it and what that is, but you were saying you don't get... It's the, just more features. You don't get the peaky blinders on this one, do you? On the on the three, then you... You, get <laughs> you don't get the peaky blinders. <laughs> do you mean the focus peaking by yes, chance? that's what I mean. Um, yes, you do get focus peaking on the 5D Mark II, yeah, but, you but don't get not the on the three. three. Um, oh, look, the roughness and toughness. I mean, look. Oh, yeah. Being cow, yeah. cow pup and all sorts. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's great. It's nice, nice to look after your camera, isn't, isn't it? it? <laughs> I'll give it a bath when I go home. <laughs> you give it a bath? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just dunk it in a I'll bucket put of water, you I'll know. I'll put that shark cap on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, turn it on. I'll show you some settings, Richard. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come some settings here. So what we got is uh, here, on the green bit here, that one. What does that mean? That's, that, that, that's actually A. 
okay? Okay. And what A is, is amateur mode. So I would use that a lot, would I? Yeah, well, you can use it a lot. You should always stick to that okay. and you'll get amateur photos. Oh. Is M, M, do you know what M is? Moderate. No. Master. Oh, master. And it's... So you go from the green square one yeah. to the M... Can you do M? Can you do that straight away? Go from amateur to master. No, it takes years. You 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 need to stick on there. On the really. Yeah, screen. you do. Okay. Yeah. All right, because you're getting too, you're getting a little bit too good, and um, I'm a bit worried that you'll be better than me. <laughs> so stick to that one. Okay. Okay. And you'll get what the camera gives you. Right. All right. I like that one. And that's that's amateur. So that's not television screen then. No, right. it's amateur. Okay. okay. Um, P is for. Piss off, don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> There's your TV, all right? Ah. That's your TV. And the other one's angry, all right? It? And the other one's almost versatile. <laughs> almost versatile. Totally versatile and almost versatile. <laughs> almost versatile and totally versatile. So we're sorting now, so we know what the inches and that are in the focus. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to be, stop being silly, okay? I'm going to, right. A, A, that is auto. That is... You don't know what that is, do you? I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> CA. Okay, is that camera aperture? I reckon that's called cock all. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've been serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, P is for... Program. Right, we'll Program. start auto. Auto gives you no um, movement at all on your camera. In other words, the camera will do everything for you to take the shot. All you do is press the shutter button. So what the camera won't, see, that's got to take. Yep, yeah, you won't get back button focusing. You, will get, you won't get anything like that at all. You let the camera decide on the exposure and everything really. Right. And all you do is point and shoot. I only used it in my younger days when I was first playing with photography. You're a virgin of photography. Correct. And most people will go on to that, but you've got to, know what CA you is need though. to get out of that. P C mode is program mode. So program mode, you will get a couple of functions. Um, you might get back button focusing. Um, there's very little you can do with program mode. You can't really even, you can change your aperture in program mode. TV mode is time value. Okay. Time. So TV is time value. But what it is, actually, it is shutter priority. Shutter priority yeah. um, so you can adjust your shutter speed. You can, I think you can do your ISO, can you? On, on shutter speed. priority. Okay, so there you go. You can choose your shutter speed. And that is excellent for wildlife and fast moving objects like cars, sports, stuff like that. Okay. Um, Aperture value. Yeah. It is to do with the aperture. Yeah. And you can change your aperture and your shutter speed will change accordingly to your aperture. So in other words, if you said you wanted f2.8 because it's low light, your shutter speed will compensate for that one. Don't it? it will do what it needs to do to get the, the exposure correct. Yeah. yeah. And then of course you get to manual mode. Manual mode is exactly what it says on the tin. tin. You are the one in control. In control. I am <laughs> control. You are in control. control. And and that what it what manual does basically you can change everything on your camera and you would have to anyway to yeah. to get your exposure correct. And that's what we tend to use in landscape photography because we are in control of our exposure. Yes. I tend to use the 2 second 2 second delay timer. Timer, yeah. Yeah, because well, make sure that yeah. the tripod. Uh, I, I notice you haven't got a trigger release on that. I've got it. Why take, that. Why take one when you can take sixty? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can Yeah. Yeah. If it was the uh, if it's film days, you wouldn't be thinking like that. I'm going to try a new thing. I'm going to try rapid fire landscape. Rapid fire landscape. <laughs> awesome. Can't, can't wait to see that one. Oh no. What? Battery running out as well. Yeah. Have, you got a new, have you got a battery in your pocket by any chance? No, I ain't actually. Oops. <laughs> B. What is B? Bulb. Bulb mode. And when do you use bulb mode? When you've got a trigger. When or you can't release. get the exposure from any other setting, you go to bulb mode. In other words, if it's too dark and you want to, uh, and it's too dark, you, you'll go to bulb mode to get the longer exposure. Yeah, man. 
that only really works in situations like landscapes yeah where or you want people moving um you want the movement in in people or you want to get rid of people out of your shot yes then bulb mode is a very good option to have for a longer shot experience. for a long exposure say for example you put a 10 stop on you go into a church so you go in there you want to take a lovely photo of all the beautiful architecture and everything there's, that, a, lot of people, right? there's a lot of people always so put your 10 stopper on set your tripod up and take the shot and you'll get rid of most of those people unless unless they're actually sat there praying, praying. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then uh you be for a long while. yeah it'll be <laughs> Well, it depends on how many sins they've had. <laughs> <laughs> I've had quite a few Chris over Christmas, but there you go. And C1, C2 and C3, they are what you tend to put in uh, as your special settings, basically. So you can set them up. Um, you can set that up for bird wildlife for example yeah. so you say for example you're, you're you're shooting barn owls and you're at 1250th of a second you can set that up to 1250th of a second blah 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 iso 100 whatever 400 yeah. isn't that a lovely place beautiful what do you think excellent Ian. this is your first time here yeah it is Excellent, 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 excellent choice, young man. Bloody good show. Bloody so, good should show. we head head back? Yes. And we? can you see how the greens have been brought out in Ian's shot? Yeah. He's, so he's, green, aren't they? He's a bit overexposed, that, isn't he? No, oversaturated. That's isn't the it? word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've um, slightly oversaturated that. Do you think? I think the greens look quite good on that. It looks like it's been, yeah. like it's been attacked by an alien. Well, that's focus peaking, you plonker. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> oh, these one? amateurs, honestly. <laughs> Stick to A, all right? Stick to that. Okay. <laughs> You know what it's been, don't you? Lovely old job. Oh.